Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm so, so, so excited to be here. For me, it's a new experience to be doing a remote conference. And I'm really, really happy to go after Janie because we kind of share the same topic, which is talking about mental health. And in particular, what I want to share with you in the next 20 minutes or so is a bit of an experience I had you know, talking about open source, uh, being a software engineer, and how I discovered mental health. And since this is a new experience for me, I would like to start with a quote, a quote that I've been hearing a lot and uh, really stuck with me. And this quote is, who the F are you? Well, uh, well, yeah, exactly. It's probably like one of the few questions I'm sure I know how to answer. And the answer is, I'm Lorenzo, and I'm very nice. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, you may know me as Calset. I'm a software engineer at Formidable. It's a consultancy. We, we do mostly JavaScript. We have uh, offices in a few places in the US and in London, where I'm based. And aside from that, I'm also a React Native core maintainer. And I'm the organizer of a small uh, meetup for open source maintainers called Provided As Is. But to be fair, for this conversation that we're going to have now today, uh, I would like you to sort of like almost forget all this. What I would like you to think about about myself is that I'm an open source maintainer. Uh, I've been through one burnout and I almost fell back into a second one uh, not even a year ago. And now I've been seeing a therapist uh, once a week for over two years. And this is kind of the perspective I'm coming from for this conversation. But that said, of course, I'm not an expert in mental health. I'm not a therapist. Uh, I'm not a person like Janie, which was clearly a professionist in that area. So everything I'm going to share with you comes from my personal experience. But if you feel like you're struggling, like these are harsh times, uh, consider reaching out to a therapist. Like it's really, really important that you take care of yourself. Okay, so let's start with the actual topic. Uh, as you may know, in open source, we have a few problems, but one of them in particular, uh, it's very, very well described by, or very well framed by this tweet, which is that we almost feel when we're involved in open source that open source is something we do extra. It's something that we do on top of our day job. It's something that is necessarily not work and we need to do it as much as we can because we're constantly trying to do more and do better. And all of this is, as you can tell by the tweet, is something that can have some side effects in your life. Like it, there's a real possibility that it leads you towards experiences of, you know, you tunnel down and you forget about the rest of your life. And well, now, uh, as you can imagine, if we had problems setting boundaries earlier or before this new phase where there's a lot of people working from home, a lot of people stuck at home, uh, now it's even harder. And this is why I felt strongly about sharing uh, this conversation with you or like uh, trying to talk to you about uh, how, can, how we can interact with open source better and in a more uh, healthy way, basically. So what I want to do today with you in the next 70 minutes or so is share two concepts, something that I would like you to keep in the back of your mind and sort of like mature and grow into how you act uh, and two micro actionables. And these actionables are more like things that you could do already or like in, the, in a week, I don't know, to kind of reach a better balance for your life as a probably like a software engineer or a developer or a maintainer in open source. So let's start right away. Let's start with the micro ones. In particular, uh, one, the first one is going to be more of an inward kind of concept, like how, um, like how you should behave with yourself. And actually, the first one is the outward one. So how do we could better interact with each other? So the first concept that I would like you to remember whenever you do open source is that the software is provided as is. And surprisingly enough, even if it's written in the MIT license, which is one of the most popular licenses out there for open source project on GitHub, 
And it, even if it's something that almost all the other li licenses have in them, most people are actually not aware that this is a, this is a thing. Like, like most people are not aware that in your repository, in your open source code, there's actually something that clearly states that the software is provided as is. Like there's no warranty. You have technically no responsibility. There's no um, necessary pressure to you as a maintainer to feel um, like you owe someone something. And this is also something that is relevant if you are a consumer or an open source citizen, as I tend to describe them. You see, when you think about your interactions in open source with other people in this optic of, oh, well, yeah, this is clearly provided as is. This is the rule of the game. Well, as a maintainer, you should feel a bit relieved. You should feel like you don't own anything to anyone, which should sort of alleviate the stress that sometimes we get when we get a billion like uh, feature requests and things like that. But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't respect your community. You should still try to be as welcoming as possible, to be as communicative as possible. You should still try to make everyone uh, part of your team. And as a citizen, as someone that uses open source, you should always remember this whenever you interact in an issue, like posting a plus one comment is not that useful. Like you're not entitled to support you. If you open, I've seen it happening so many times. If you open an issue and just complain or ask something harshly, uh, it's not helpful for anyone. And it's not like you're entitled to that support anyway. So you should be more gentle. You should understand where the open source maintainer comes from in terms of like workload and how much time you can dedicate to the project. And also you should try to be more proactive. And in particular, uh, on this topic, I want to give a shout out to the Open Source Maintainers of You Nothing blog post by Mike McQuaid. He is one of the maintainers behind uh, Homebrew, which is a project that basically everyone on macOS uses. But what about the other macro? Okay, this is a bit uh, more complicated, but uh, it's how you should interact with yourself because Okay, think about it. We are more hurt by our own expectation of other people than by their actions. So this is a phrase that when I first heard it, like kind of broke my brain in a sense that I really felt I finally understood something about myself. I finally understood why whenever I saw a plus one comment on an issue, I felt so angry and so stressed by it. Like, here's the thing. I wasn't stressed by a person writing two characters in a comment on a GitHub issue. I was hurt by the fact that I was expecting something from them and kind of realigning the reality of what was happening with the way uh, I should react to the, to the actual event helped me a lot in reducing the level of stress I have whenever I interact in open source. Um, Basically, what I want to achieve with this slide is basically try to um, help you understand that you should try to work more on your self-awareness. You see, uh, whenever we do open source, I kind of feel that we tend to turn off our sense of self. We tend to say, hey, well, I, I, I'm going to go through this. I will do these extra hours of work. Oh, well, uh, these people are being harsh, but I can push through. Um, we tend to like sort of underplay ourselves and we tend to not listen to our feelings and emotion or trying to understand where they're coming from. And this is not really good. Like, I really feel this is important to work on as someone that works in open source, but in general in life, but in open source in particular. And I also know this is art. Like, uh, I've sort of grew into this awareness by having a therapist and working, working on this with them. But that's it for the micro to topics. Those were like quite, quite huge. And I'm pretty sure like maybe one of or two of you were like, oh, wow, this is really relevant. But let's actually turn it down a bit. Let's start to talk about the micro. And in particular, 
please remember that some of this may be slightly polarizing, polarizing takes. So please be gentle on Twitter and in the Twitch chat because I'm going to read all of your comments. So here's the first one. Uh, remove all the notifications. And what I mean by that is, for example, I'm a maintainer for React Native. I don't watch the repository. Like I'm aware that things are happening, but watching a, a repository creates so much noise, so many notifications that it basically just overloads me with unnecessary information most of the time. When I talk about this in particular, um, and when I say noise, is that what I'm trying to say is that there are ways, for example, I don't remember if it's GitHub or a redefined GitHub feature to be able to subscribe to a single issue, but uh, you should really consider switching to this approach, like stop uh, randomly like, okay, repo, give me everything, but say to the repo, no, you, just, you don't give me anything and I will subscribe to the things I care about. Because reducing this kind of noise allows you to be more aware and be less overloaded with information. For the same reason, for example, I don't get any emails from GitHub. When I want to interact with GitHub, I open GitHub and I see the notifications in there. Receiving a billion notifications and then uh, having get them as emails and then having filters to see so only some of them is not good for me. It's already an overload and I'm trying to remove as much of that as possible. And also, you may see this coming, no push notifications. Like on my phone in particular, like I have blocked all the notifications aside from a few exceptions like WhatsApp or Telegram. Again, just to reduce all this noise because we have so much currently in our life that we really don't need most of it. Micro number two, do open source in small bursts. Uh, what I mean with burst is uh, like try to dedicate uh, sessions of like 15, 20 minutes where you do open source. And if you can, squeeze it in within your hours of work in, during the work day. Um, of course, I know that some people will not be able to do so, but um, bear with me. I'm going to explain a bit more why I think it's useful. And for example, for me, uh, it's kind of easy to do because uh, as a software engineer for Formidable, I use React Native, so I can sort of like go back and forth and do this kind of like 15 minutes bursts. But why I'm focusing on these uh, small sessions? First off, because I really feel that kind of dedicating full hours or like, for example, in the past, I used to do three to four hours on a Saturday to do open source. I find it really harmful now. Uh, whenever I start working so long without any boundaries, but be like, okay, I'll just work a few hours. Uh, that sort of led me into a spiral. I would just go in tunnel mode and just keep working over time, every single time. Uh, by doing it during your work hours also, or like, again, squeezing it in the pauses during your work day, uh, you sort of normalize your brain that what you're doing is work. It's not something that has no value. It's not something that, oh, well, I've spent a week on this, but I feel like I've done nothing. No, it's still work. And also, if you do it when you, in the, in the small bits during work hours, you don't do it in the weekends. And this is really important. I know some people, again, have different um, situations, so maybe they can only do open sourcing weekends. But again, um, I would really try to limit your involvement in open source in time that should be your free time. And also giving you these small bursts, like, okay, 15 minutes, it's a it's an art boundary, so it's there's the a, a smaller risk that you end up spending two hours on something because also you need to get back to work. Also, yeah, I mean this is kind of a <laughs> another way to phrase it, but like if you're starting in open source, this is a great way to start. Like find a library that you use in your workday and consider like doing this 50 minutes, like, oh, I'm gonna open an issue, I'm gonna open a PR and talk through that. But here's the last micro actionable, quote unquote. Like, please, please, please try to make sure that your, your open source time doesn't merge in your brain with your free time. Like it's so hard. And in, again, in particular at this time, it's hard to have boundaries 
And your free time should be the time that you dedicate to things to take care of yourself. And I know some people will be like, well, but this is what I like to do, or, well, I don't know what else to do. So hear me out. Here are a few suggestions of things that you could do in your free time or in your daily life to improve your mental health or like your general behavior or uh, well-being, sorry. And just to make sure that uh, like I get your attention on this slide, I'm going to do in a really, really ugly way with a really ugly slide. I'm going to try to list all the things that are going to appear on screen. And this is going to go really, really bad. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Okay, do Tai Chi in VR, watch Matavalana, Kano, and PJ on YouTube, meditate, sleep eight hours a night, exercise, take a note of, of something that bothers you and then set it on fire, take vitamins, make your bedroom a zone free, a phone free zone, watch Boza Horseman, burn candles, learn something not computer science related, get a pet and play video games. Okay, I think that I gave you enough of an idea of like how many things there are there outside that you could do in your free time and not in your open source time to sort of balance more and try to uh, improve your well-being. So to sum it up, uh, we're uh, roughly on time. Uh, open source can be really beautiful. I had a lot of interesting and unique experiences because I've been involved in open source and I really, really feel that there's value, but it needs to be enjoyed responsibly. You know, sometimes we like to say that open source is free, as in free beer. But, you know, if you think it through, like, if you don't enjoy responsibly beer, you, you will end up throwing up. Like, if you have too much beer, you end up throwing up. Uh, also, improve your sense of self. Like, your sense of self and, like, trying to understand how you're feeling. Like, uh, Janie, uh, Jane, sorry, explained it so, so well in her uh, session right before mine. Uh, it's really, really important. And also set boundaries. Uh, again, that's the most important thing. Uh, one of the risks in open source is to not have boundaries and just keep doing work and then you eventually just burn out. But yeah, uh, this is it for me. I would like to thank you all. I would like to thank the Near Forum for uh, having me and the production team. It's been great. I would like to thank you for Meetable for allowing me to participate. You can reach out to me at Calset or at, I have an email if you're old school or you don't like Twitter, which is totally acceptable. And I will publish the slides or on Twitter. And also, please, please, please take care of yourself. If you're struggling, we're in a time where it's really, really possible and it's okay. So please reach out to someone. I've posted here a couple of links for US and UK. If you're in a, another country, I'm sorry. I just wanted to put that to once where I have kind of a bit of knowledge of some links that I could put there. But again, um, reaching out and asking for help is a sign of strength. And thank you again for having me. Goodbye.